Welcome to service here at Salisbury United on this uh, really hot day. You know, when February comes along, just think back to this day and you'll appreciate it. Also, uh, welcome to all those that are on Zoom and YouTube that are online are sharing service with us today. Welcome. My name is Brian McCarthy and I'll be the lay assist this morning. And today, what is wonderful is we have Karen back with us. We have Karen Gusick is joining us as uh, minister today. And by way of introduction, we'll just note that uh, she's old enough to be retired and enjoying life, and that's all you really need to know. Uh, she grew up uh, on a farm east of Sherwood Park and is now living on an acreage in Ardrossan. Uh, she is there with her husband, Wren, two children, and two grandchildren. Though the family is a bit spread out, the daughter is in Nicaragua and the son is in Colorado. Through her early career, she did a lot of work in administrative uh, positions, various places. Uh, church life has been busy, Yo, know, baptized, confirmed, participated in the work of the United Church through all her life, and in later years became a lay designated minister. She particularly has enjoyed working with youth as her children grew up and then became involved with the United Church at all levels, at the, the presby, pres, Presbyterial excuse me, Conference and National. One memory of sharing time with Salisbury United Congregation is the picnics with our Drossen United. And the, the one thing that stands out with that are the ball games where the Stevenson boys would just knock the cover off the ball all the time and then uh, Salisbury would wind up being triumphant. <laughs> Along with uh, church activities, it keeps her very busy. She enjoys gardening and curling. So welcome, Karen. Yeah. To start off today, uh, we have our announcements. Uh, the only announcement I have is that with our opening up in the fall, we really need to get at having a top to bottom cleaning of the church. And we want to kick that off. The official day is September 10th to be working on that. That would, you know, it's after Labor Day. It's a great time to come and share fellowship with people, you know, and get a sense of accomplishment looking at a nice clean church. There are sign-up sheets at the back in the narthex with different tasks listed out. So if you would like, you could sign up for those tasks. And you don't necessarily have to come September 10th. If you sign up for task and you have an opportunity to do that before September 10th, please come, do it, just sign off, you'll, and we'll get the work done. Are there any other announcements that you know, I'm not aware of and should be talked about? Nope. Okay, uh, I would then like to do the Treaty 6 Land Acknowledgement. We worship together on land where people lived, traveled, and held sacred ceremonies for long generations before there was a nation called Canada. This is Treaty 6 territory, and as we enter into worship today, we affirm the sacred and ongoing relationship of the Cree, Blackfoot, Dene, Assiniboia, Nakoda, and later the Métis people with this land, and along with our treaty relationship with each other. We're going to begin with a hymn medley. The first one will be Dear God Who Loves All Humankind. Second, Let Us Build a House. And third is Spirit Open My Heart. And on the third hymn, if able, Please stand and join us. Thank you. 
would invite you to join me in the call to prayer. We gather to praise our wondrous creator. We gather to lift our voices in thankfulness to you. That we can give. So let us join our hearts and our voices as we gather together in the community to worship. And I invite you to stand and to share the peace with one another, to place your hand over your heart, to offer the peace to those who are watching via video and to also share with each other. And so may the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Lighting the Christ candle. Let us proclaim the presence of the light of Christ together. The light of Christ is with us, between us, and all around us. Thanks be to God. And let us share responsibly with the opening prayer, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Holy One, enter our hearts as we prepare ourselves for another week of summer busyness. Loving one, enter our hearts as we meet and greet family, friends, and strangers. Faithful God, Remind us that we are not alone. Gracious God, bless us as we worship and hear our words as we say, our Father, who art in heaven, come to thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our next, our next hymn will be Come and Find a Quiet Center.
had chose during our discovery time to read a story that relates to the scripture. It is a story that's entitled, titled, The Woman Bent. The Woman Bent. I wonder how many, I see a lot of women here, have ever felt bent. A few of us. You'll hear the scripture following this. My back has hurt for 18 years. Or is it 18,000? My back has all but given out. I have looked down day after day, looked at my feet, looked at the dirt, looked at those toenails lined with grime and the calluses, now hard as a horn. I have looked down because I could not look up. I have been bent for a long time. I thought this was how I was made. I had forgotten what it was like to stand straight. I'd forgotten how this body felt when the vertebrae stack one upon the other, nice and straight. I had forgotten what it was like to breathe in that feel of good, the good rush of air through the heart and through the lungs and through the gut. I had forgotten what things look like if I stand up straight. You see, I had been so used to being bent that being straight feels odd. It feels like new shoes. It feels like I'm a different person. It feels like I can see and I can breathe and I can move and I can speak. It feels like I can't be bent anymore. I am a different woman. And yet this body knows being bent is hell. The funny thing, when he laid his hands on me, he felt my spine. He felt those bumps that others flinch from. He felt those protrusions. The funny thing, when he laid his hands on me, I wanted to stand up tall. Something in me remembered. I have not always been this way. I have not always been curved and twisted. So now I can breathe. I can take a breath and simply feel that rush of air. I can see the sky, and I can speak because I can breathe. And I have plenty, plenty to say. You see, the dirt taught me a lot. I spent so long looking down at that dust between my toes that I know things. I made friends with that soil with that grime and with the earth. I made the acquaintance of the dust, and now she is my friend. That dust will not let me go. Now when I bend over to see her, it is out of love, and it is out of memory. It is out of wanting to remember being bent so that I do not bend another. It is out of wanting to receive whatever gifts being bent gave to me. I had been bent so, so long. That woman is a part of me. She learned some things in that distorted posture, and she knows so now, 
Now when I can stand up straight, when I can stretch, when those vertebrae stack gently one upon the other, when the stretching of a limb and a ligament frees his body of that age-old contortion, you know what? I give thanks that I was bent for seeing it through, for carrying it on, for birthing the one who can stand up straight and speak. Amen. hands were kind hands. Our first scripture reading this morning is Jeremiah 1, 4 to 10. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Our next, our next hymn will be, I have called you by your name.
Our second scripture reading is Luke 13, 10 to 17. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled, that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, who Satan bound for eighteen long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. So we heard the story of the bent woman. This story in Luke describes the transformation and the liberation of a woman. A woman that is bound by a spirit that has crippled her. If you think back to the story, isn't it really sad that no one knew her name? They didn't even know the name of this person that came to the synagogue each week. Isn't it sad to think how alone she must have felt as as she was shunned by one and then another and another? It is sad to think that no one cared. No one attempted to understand. No one attempted to lift her up until Jesus came to speak. And as he reached out and accepted her, as he touched her, she lifted her head and she began to truly, truly live life. And she dances with praise and thanksgiving. Wow. Wow. a tough story and I spent some time pondering this and as I thought about it I thought probably most of us have been bound by some spirit evil spirit at some time we've probably all been bent over sometimes by our own mistakes as we step out and we risk Sometimes because of the words and the actions of those who surround us. Sometimes it's our own misunderstandings of things that we see and things that we hear. We don't comprehend the whole thing. Sometimes it's a lack of confidence on our own part. Sometimes we're in vulnerable situations and abused and used. And sometimes it is because we feel we have not lifted up, lived up to the expectations that have been placed on us. It can mean many things, way more than the list that I have said, that have held us from standing up straight and feeling able to speak and do. And I wonder who and what helps us during those times. What 
is it that can help us remove that bend, remove that problem, that difficulty, and make us whole again? And perhaps it's for this reason that the scripture that went along with this is from Jeremiah, where God touches a boy's mouth and says to him, go, go and speak. You are to become a prophet. Do not be afraid to deliver a message. Do not be afraid to stand strong for the oppressed. His response, but I am but a boy. But it was this boy that was chosen to build and to plant. It was this boy that was chosen to break down barriers. And it actually appears that this boy had no choice at all. That is what he was to do, and he did it. I'll bet you can all remember that old song, Bend and stretch, reach for the sky, stand on tippy toes, oh so high. We sang it to our children, didn't we? I always thought about that as an exercise song. Didn't you? Yeah. And then I realized that it is often when we are a child that our character is built. That we build up or we knock down. We encourage, inviting them to step out and risk. Or we kind of pull them in and care for them and restrain them. Maybe even discourage. That we build or lose confidence. That we begin to become the person that we are. The person that dreams dreams. And if we've been encouraged and lifted up, we'll attempt to fulfill them. No matter how long it takes, that dream is there. And I can't help but think of the parents here today the grandparents that are here today, the teachers that are here today. All of, all of you have such huge influence on our children, on our young folks. All of you help them achieve their goal. All of you help to build them up even though it's, sometimes it isn't until much later in life when we feel we've really beat everything and we can go on. And thank you. Thank you to each of you. And I say that from the bottom of my, my heart because I know my parents lifted and never discouraged. And I know the teachers, Val here, that taught my daughter, lifted her up, never discouraged her. I know the youth group leader, Nina, lifted. And I know many of you that I can't name have lifted children up, strange children, family children, and those that are just there. And so today I ponder how this woman got so bent so bent that all she could do was walk facing the ground. So bent that she couldn't bear to see life, to see people around her. So bent that all she saw was the shoes of those that passed without a greeting. She could have been a young woman crippled by memories of sexual abuse. Perhaps she wanted to be a bride, to feel love. But the memories of her earlier years kept her from doing that. She could have been a beautiful young woman in a workplace where she suffered harassment. Yes, she enjoys her job and she needs the work. 
but she is tired of taking the abuse that comes with it, with keeping that position. But with head down, she pushes on, and she does what needs to be done, at what cost. She could have been a beautiful single mother with a meager income. Just enough to keep food on the table and a roof over her head. But she dreams of just having just enough money to take her daughter to a movie. But in her heart, she knows that those around her, if she asked, would recognize her poorness and deem it wasteful as they would whisper behind her back. When we carry burdens, we always fear the worst and see the worst, and we do not believe in ourselves. And there are so many burdens that we can carry that cripple us. Things like culture, laws, traditions, economic systems, political systems and political powers, the color of our skin, the medical issues that we may be born with, the places that we live, the clothes that we wear, the people that we meet. Things like showing weakness as a child and then being bullied all the way through school. Strangely, all of these things have an effect on us. And we, you and I, we have been commissioned to open our eyes, to try to see, to hear, to understand, even though very little is shared. Hopefully, as we gather here on a Sunday morning, we can find inner peace. And we can lift our voices in praise and dance with God. Hopefully we can become healed through forgiveness, through the touch, through the hope that Jesus offered. Offers through all of those folks who surround us, no matter what time of day or night it is people that are there for us. Hopefully we can listen and share the burdens we have with God or perhaps with someone close to us so that we can feel ourselves lifted up, so we can hold our head high, so we can once again dream that dream we had as a child and move forward. Hopefully, we can be a part of the healing process for others, those that are around us, be it strangers, be it a friend, be it family, knowing that the words from our mouths can make such a difference in knocking someone down or in building them up. It is in the story in Jeremiah that reminds me that even if we are unsure, that we are capable, we have been given that opportunity, the opportunity to lift up, that we have been given the opportunity to hear stories, to recognize folks that are bent over, that we have been given that opportunity to walk with them. And that even though we have never walked in their shoes, even though we don't personally understand exactly where they have been, hopefully we've been given enough insight to enable folks to hold their head high again and stand strong. You and I, we are called to minister to people, to offer unconditional love to each and every person we meet. And today, my hope, my dream, 
and my prayer is that we can feel the touch of God as we go out into the world, standing straight and standing tall, not bent, and that we can enable others to stretch upwards, lifting their faces to the sky with confidence, a whole lot of confidence to pursue the dream that they have. Amen. Our next hymn will be like a healing stream. gathered here in this place to discern for ourselves the deeper meaning of the words that are written down in scripture, that are in the hymns and in the thoughts. We have gathered to offer thanks for life and all that is part of it. And in response, we now offer our financial gifts. Well, actually, we've offered them at the back or through par or many other ways so that the ministry here in this pastoral charge might continue, so that the ministry of the greater community and the world might be assisted. But we also give of ourselves with the hope that each one of us 
can make a huge difference in this world. And so let us share together the recognition of our offering. We offer not only gifts, compassionate God, but our times so we might spend more moments with the lonely, our words so the voiceless might be healed, our hands that the hungry might be fed, our hearts so that the rejected might find a home. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And as we come to our time of prayers for our journey, prayers for as we go out into the world, prayers for those who surround us, I ask if there are folks that need to be lifted up, if there are celebrations that need to be remembered, if there are joys, there are concerns, and I invite you to offer those. And I have been given one. Uh, Elaine and Nithi. Is it Nithi? Yeah. Their son Ravi has died in Taiwan. Very fortunately, the family was able to arrive there on time to see him. And the funeral will be held there. And I invite you all to hold that family in your hearts this week as they go through that celebration of all he was to them, as they celebrate the life that he lived in Taiwan. And Val has shared with me there will be a celebration here at some time so you can gather with that family. And so I, I, my heart just goes so out to that family because it must have been a long time since they have been able to see their son with COVID. Then let us bring the prayers that I speak and the prayers that are in your heart to God. Let us pray. Loving God, we, we thank you for the most beautiful summer days, for the great health that we have to see and to do, the work of caring not just for your creation, but for your children, for each other. We thank you for friends that care, for doctors and nurses that work long hours, for teachers that support and that strengthen, and for adults that lift up rather than knock down. We are so happy to gather and lift our voices in praise. Help us to open our hearts, offering the burdens that we have to you and asking you to help us carry them. May we live offering unconditional healing love to those who surround us. Today we ask for healing for those who carry burdens, for any known to us who are ill at home or in hospital, for those who are suffering in the so many different ways, suffering because of the heat, suffering because of homelessness, suffering because of the economic situation. Today we ask for peace. Peace not just for ourselves, but for the community and the world. We question how we can make a difference for those who are in the midst of war-torn nations, for those who are living in poverty in third world countries. Today we pray for students and teachers as they prepare to head back to school. And today we ask that you would hear the prayers of our hearts in this moment of silence.
nourish our minds, guide our footsteps, and nudge us to help build a world of hope and peace as we leave this place. Amen. And let us go now, knowing that the light of Christ can never really be put out. That the light goes with us out into the world. And as a blessing, it drifts like smoke towards all four directions. The smoke rises like a blessing until we meet again. Declaring that the light of Christ is with us, in us, and around us. Our closing hymn will be sent out in Jesus' name. One who rules by love alone grant you peace. Amen.